Yeah. Can you guys hear? Yeah. All right. This is my inner voice. Um. First of all, thank you for taking the time for being here. I uh, will do my absolutely best to answer some questions. As I was introduced before, my name is Millie Williams. I represent the Individual Assistance Program of FEMA, specifically the Individual Households Program. Um, these programs, um, which is in your letter at IHP, provides money for direct services to eligible individuals and households affected by the disaster who have unsure or underinsured necessary expenses and various needs. The IHP eligibility is usually things that must be U.S. Citizens, non citizens, national or qualified non citizens must be able to confirm your identity. So, Millie Diaz, my driver's license has to say Millie Diaz, and my social security has to say Millie Diaz. The applicant's insurance or other forms of disaster assistance cannot meet the disaster need, and the applicant's necessary expenses and serious needs as a direct cost of the declared disaster. You guys have Debbie, then you have Helene, and you have Milton, and some of you have damages in all three. So for those that have registered, I'm going to explain now what is housing assistance. Housing assistance might include help with temporary housing needs like repairing or replacing owner-occupied homes or mitigation measures to rebuild a stronger. Applicants may receive more than one type of housing assistance. FEMA determines the appropriate type of assistance based on the disaster cost losses, access to life-sustaining services, and cost effective effectiveness or other factors. To qualify for housing assistance, FEMA must confirm that the applicant lives at the disaster damage and is their primary residence. So in most of the cases, that's why we send an inspector to your home. So you can prove first that you are saying who you're saying, that you are, that you occupy the house at the time of the disaster, that it's your primary residence, and once the inspector verifies that, then they will go into what type of damages does your home have, okay? So home repair or home replace assistance. Sorry, my mouth went bad. Well, that money is to help repair or replace an occupied disaster damaged property residence so the home is safe to live in. For example, this may include addressing mold caused by the disaster, money to repair or replace well, septic systems, private homes, roads, bridges, and docks, or money for mitigation measures. Money can also help with pre-existing damage 
to parts of the home that were further damaged by the disasters. There is also accessibility, money to help those with disabilities with specific repairs to make their home accessible, including exterior ramps, wrap bars, paved paths for the home entrance. Repairs can also be made when these items are damaged. Improvements can be made when these features were not threatened prior to the disaster, and they are needed due to a pre existing disability in a damaged home or due to a disability taught now by the disaster. We also cover some um, mitigation measures, the money, like I said, for septic mitigation measures. Those are paid costs. That those are based on the cost and the amount amount, sorry, damage to the homes. This can include roof repair with more resilient materials, elevating water heaters or furnace to prevent damage in future floods. Temporary housing needs include rental assistance, loading expenses reimbursement. Direct housing assistance, and these are forms of assistance that must be requested by the state of Florida. So, direct housing assistance was approved yesterday for some counties for Florida. So, those are important because these are forms of manufactured homes that can be displayed somewhere for those who have been displaced because of the disaster. We have multi-family lease and repair, transportable, temporary housing that can be covered directly, which is existing ready for occupied residential properties and permanent housing construction if the state requests them. Other need assistance are various needs assistance, money to help the survivors to pay for essential items like water, food, first aid, breast feeding supplies, infant formula, diapers, personal hygiene items, and fuel transportation. Displacement, money to help with immediate housing needs if the applicants cannot return to the home because of the disaster. Personal property, medical, dental, funeral, child care, and assistance with miscellaneous items. That also includes transportation. If your primary vehicle of the house has been damaged, and it's insured, and it's up to all the folks that the state, we might be able to help you with transportation needs if your primary vehicle is damaged. Moving on, storage expenses, clean and sanitize, let's see, and proof flood insurance policy, okay? <laughs> Everybody that has questions, go to this side of the room. <laughs> if you have, I can hear you, that's what I'm trying to do. For those, I, I, you guys can hear me just a little bit, but I can hear you guys because that's too high and I'm too short. Your case, you will receive those 
by the one that you choose, whether it's email, post office, whatever you choose, or you can always upload the FEMA app and check your status of your application there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the So we are very, very extremely busy. I don't see the background. What's the wish you See that I can see the background. Difficult for anyone to hear on Chris difficult for you to And that's exactly what I was gonna say. So we're gonna need the questions and answers towards the end so we can finish each of our presentations because I'm just one part of probably hundreds of questions that you guys have out there. So new construction. What value are you seeing for the 50% of it? Thanks, I'm calling it. That's not me. I will go to the next presentation. Second. I'm going to close the end. And I want to and I work with one of these. And so all the questions have been done about 50% of all have been provided. My name is Andy Hanson, and I work in Baltimore. So, so I'm working with Tina, and I'm working with Tina, and so all the questions that you've been throwing out about the 50% will fall under blood and the name. But what I need to start with is explaining to you that floodplain management facility of the local community. They have adopted and enforced the local floodplain management rules as well as the requirements of the Florida Fifty Codes. I can tell you some general information about what they're going to be looking for when you go in and talk to your local community. But we cannot answer specific questions because there are what 25, 26 communities within the county. Every one of them can have slightly different regulations, and it's not fair to you or us to try to answer questions. That's because if you get it wrong, then you're taking the wrong information away, and we don't want that. Okay, so I'll give you some general information, and we'll go from there. Is that okay? Thank <laughs> you. So again, FEMA nor the state can make these determinations. They have to be made by the local community officials. And so what we're talking about, when people talk about 50% rule, well, what we're really talking about is the substantial damage plan. Those are in your local ordinances, they're also in the Florida building code. What your thresholds are to local community, I can't answer. Um, but what I can say is some general information. So wind structure inside the special flood hazard area, so like zones A, zone B, E, that type of thing, or damage. All the communities that participate in the National Flood Insurance Program have a responsibility to assess the impact before the repairs are made to those directions. And so they're going to be asking for some information. Y'all wrote out a couple things earlier. But if a structure is deemed to be substantially damaged by the local official, the structure will need to be brought into compliance with the local current flood management regulations. To find out what those are, then you're going to have to ask your local official because you may have higher numbers in your local ordinances. And so that's why it's so important you go back to the community because it's their requirement. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, they're going to be taking a look at 
information that they're requesting. And it really comes down to what are the costs to repair this structure to a pre, pre event condition? Right? Those are the costs you're going to have to bring to your local community. What forms you need to bring it on or what you need to do, if those questions need to be asked in the local community. I'm aware that most communities are putting a lot of that information out on their website. Some of the communities are permitting may be handled by the county, but if you're one of those and you're already aware of that, you may want to start with the county's website. Uh, but not all communities are using the county or interlocal community. The other thing is I heard somebody mention is market value. They have to know what the market value of your structure, not your land, not your shed, your pool house, anything else. But if that's your, they need to know that market value. How they determine that? Again, we give ideas to the community, but they determine what they're going to use. Sometimes what you start with is what the property appraiser has, but there are other things that are beyond that. But I can't speak to the local community of which other options they have inside their process. But that's what you're really looking for. What are the costs to repair all of the damages that occur and determining that market value? Those are the two things that are going to start that information. The cost to repair all the damages is generally provided by the company. Come to your local community, they may accept other sources, but it has to include the cost, both materials and labor costs and overhead, like a contract to be charged for the <laughs> so I will ask the whole questions on this at the end because we're coming for speaker, and we will stay around and help as much as we can. But I can't say this strongly enough: your ultimate answers are going to come from your local communities because it's their regulation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I understand. I thought it was going to be the local community. And so, the one we have to have is that we may have to have to have to have to have to have to You want to answer the question with you from the police home, but access to credit. Thank you. And you want to talk to Again, it is the one of the things. One of the things, if you can hold the questions to the end, we, we value the questions, right? We're not going to get them aside. But one of the things that keep in mind if you're talking to us, let us know what the community is because we may need to reach out with them to see if there's some guidance with general technical assistance we can provide them. We can help us at the same time. Next, we Next, 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 Hello, my name is Deborah Parker. Excuse me, my name is Deborah Parker. I'm with FEMA. I'm with the National Production Program as well as the My name is Deborah Parker. I am with FEMA. I work with the President of the Department. Um, and we're 
Regarding uh, what we set up here is uh, a team that will come up all over to help you with whatever we can to help you feel about safer and strong. Mitigation actually is talking about uh, protection to yourself, to your lives, to your crops. And what we've done is we've got individuals in our disaster recovery center. to build that safer and stronger. But if nothing, if I can say nothing else, the most important thing is to listen to the people that are here that are providing guidance and remember, things about permitting before you start any repairs. We have lots of information available for you regarding your roof repairs. Like that. I have a phone number available for you if you have any questions about mapping or insurance. I'm going to give that number to you right now. That's 877 2627. You can find that in our uh, information line as well as mapping. So if you have any questions about it, you're more than welcome to go ahead and call. I'll repeat that number for those that didn't hear. It is 877-227. Now, the need you will be able to get a lot of your questions answered regarding mapping and insurance. And any other questions, they will be able to refer you to a proper, proper phone number or email address. Now, I want to also give you a couple of email sites that we have. One is floodsmart.gov. If you go there, use the search window and the tabs up top. Most of the questions you have, you may be able to find there. As well as the second email address, which is fema.gov. Recovery Center. Remember, we have lots of internal and external partners there to assist. To help you perform your cleanup process and building back safer and stronger. So just come see us at the disaster recovery center if you can. Thank you. Um, hi, um, I'm Morales uh, from Puerto Rico. Uh, we have had this experience like so many different times. So I, I have felt um, I'm feeling right now what you are feeling. So I identify myself with you all. Um, I'm with the uh, SBA. I'm a federal officer with the SBA. Uh, we are working hand in hand with FEMA in so many, in so many different meetings, activities, events, interviews, department of people. Uh, you all know that even though that we are not friends, we are not friends of FEMA, we are not option, don't get this going, never ever talk about this off. Uh, we have a uh, good program. We are still having uh, a lot of millions uh, in every declaration that we go. We have a lot of physical damages, economic damages, and uh, for people. Uh, we are a more four level today uh, to forward that we are uh, normal dynamic picture as we can. Uh, we have uh, some examples. Uh, our interest rates are big. They don't change from the life of the world. A lot of the people use these funds, these federal funds, because we have policy of when we are confirming we see our interest rate. We don't help them for that year. They interest rate, uh, they don't have to. Uh, in other words, that's how a uh, lot of ways on how the people can get back in their feet, with their faster, so they don't have to pay anything for that year. So that's a uh, very helpful value. Also, the people you see because of the uh, 10 years, some people uh, accept the uh, peace law for 10 years, so that means that you can have no more years. So I have to pay this for some because of uh, even though that. You feel that you are not going to qualify or you don't need it. Always share this information uh, with your friends, family, working with your spouse. 
and we some people can can use to meet. We always are uh, here. Uh, we appreciate uh, every stakeholder that we meet, all the survivors that can help us uh, sharing the information. Oh, so the people that are from who own the strength and profit and businesses, uh, the economic families are only for businesses and the profit. The property families are for furniture, clothes, uh, vehicles, those are some examples. Also, we have higher needs uh, for our public, up to, up to, uh, for the families, up to 500,000 for homeowners, uh, for people damages. So that's very uh, valuable too. We always encourage the people to apply at the DMC, that's the call center, both with the agency. We are there, you can apply with both with the agency the same day, same day, you know, the state of benefits. So that's very helpful too. You have to know that we have, we have received so many applications that if you leave these applications for the men, it's going to take longer to receive our. Uh, the uh, response about the application. So that's very important to know too. Our number is 
So that same Department of Emergency Management, the Office of Public Management, reached out to the local community after Betty, after Helene, after Melvin, and asked them if they needed a building. And the community said yes, and the state offered to hire a contractor to come in on the, the community they have. Those inspections are being coordinated through the state, through FDO, directly through the contractor on the FEMA is not part of that process, so I don't have any information on it. We talk to our city office then, our city leadership, and get us to meet the dancers. Who do we talk to? What do you do with our personal side? I'm looking. Right. <laughs> So the local community has adopted has the responsibility to inform their budget as well as the building code. The requirements for related to sustainable damage are in both of those documents. One is the local ordinance, you can park your land development code. And the other one is the affordability code, and there's a, a, uh, an addition for existing structures. Um, and so the rules are there. That's the way it's set up in the state of Florida for keeping the building code or keeping the ordinance. Those are enforced at the local level by the community. You have a building official, every community identifies with us. They're likely an administrator because they have to put it in the ordinance because of the city. It can be delegated, and if so, I would have done that. And I would have done that. Uh, that is. All of the decisions related to the substantial damage and anything to do with permitting is only with the local community because it's tied to land use authority. That land use authority was granted to the community by the state. FEMA has absolutely no regulation that allow us to come in and issue permits because we don't have issues. <laughs> so we should be the our city leadership to determine the direction we need to go. How is it based on when we should get our inspection? Hold on one second. If you could ask the question, then I'll have her repeat the question and then answer the question. So that, we need to go to our city leadership then and ask them what, what the timetable is for these inspections. Because they're the ones who are scheduling that, correct? Yeah, so my name is Molly Porter. Well, what team do you need to work with the state of the local? It sounds like we need to pay the local. So we're going to work with the state of the population. Jillian, I can't remember her last name, I'm sorry. But I'll go on to the next one. I'm going to go on to the next one. She said, I don't know. Does everybody know what that is?
So, oops, never mind. What a community chooses to participate, they agree to adopt and enforce regulations. There is a lot of misinformation out there, but there is a female rule or a female that is not simple. The local community has adopted it into their local. Mr. Curse, right here. So, let's say we raise those goals. Let's say we raise the goals. Are they done? In other words, in the later part, they have significant damage to the homes. If they based one change, will they have done this change? Are they grandfathered? Are they done? There are there are post requirements that don't stand for now to spend the money. But they raise the homes. Is this 50% rule? Are these people that instead? Get them to build the standards of the time as we need it. It's done. Quite done. Done. Did everybody hear the question? So, if I understand the question correctly, you're saying if somebody today either chooses to or is required to elevate their home to make meet the current requirements of today, are they grandfathered in if they're they have an impact in the future and they're then potentially damaged? So, if we can't separate the damage from the change proof there. In an end, both the, the same department basically, for the most part, the local community can modify them. So the answer is no. Because when it's damaged in the future, or when it's in the future, it's going to go through the same process as going through right now. The settlement done. If it's, so let me start with, if it's not compliant with the requirements of the time. Right. It has to be a fully compliant structure, meaning that it was built in compliance. The regulations haven't changed, but if the regulations change, which I believe is the, the, the position, the question, yes. If you don't blame other men for working in the purpose, for example, we built our house 20 years ago, it was built in compliance at the time. But now you have to because you were damaged, and you have to be compliant. If it's sustained in the end, it's the current regulation. Say, we can the 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 so it says we will not spend less than whatever that we don't have But as soon as you trigger that you have to use the Okay, so the question is, what is the 
and then there's alphabetical community. If your community pays to have their municipal plan on this website, it will be there. How to find it is probably your next question. So when you open it, you're going to go. Um, don't know what to do. There's a first bar at the top. Type in flood plain. F L O O D P L A I N as one word. And it should take you to a couple of hits. And what you're going to do is look for the beginning of that text. If it follows the state model, which um, about 400 communities in the state of New Mexico, um, it, it will lay out information about why they've adopted the ordinance. And then it gives you some information about the duties of the floodplain administrator and then additional duties of the floodplain administrator. Within that first part, if you're getting to that, once you get in the document, if you can print it out, great. Start looking for the word substantial damage or substantial improvement. It will tell you who it is by title, job title. And the reason for that is staff can change. Usually that position is always in the top of the partnership. That, that, we, that thing we would go to is that floodplain administrator identified by the job title. Uh, the meeting code. So in so it's abbreviation of municipal. So in you in I. So Michael Umbrella, November Indy. O D E. All one word. And I know most of the communities in the state are out there. I don't know every single community in the state is on that website. That's an easy place. That's where I go first. If I can't find it there, I then have to do a little more research. Do you think it's really about that? I can usually find it, but I have probably a little more experience looking for them than you do. But if you go and put it again, there's a different bar that is one of the answers. Go ahead, sir. So in that letter, you can't do repairs of over forty seven thousand blood blockers. So what what they're giving you, I'm assuming the letter is from the community official dealing with substantial damage. Everything is under that and their determination is subject to floodplain management of the current standard. Anything over that is subject to meeting the current requirements. Yeah. Yeah. So why I 
Unfortunately, I don't know what they're referring to. I don't know what program, but again, some of them do have inspectors. When you're talking flood plain management, we don't have inspectors that go out of the building. So there's there's inspection for some home damage. There's also inspection for the infrastructure damage. There's multiple programs that make it in. And this can get very confusing. And don't realize there's a story that sit where they're looking for information on. Hold on, I think you need to say something. Okay, so there's some other things that they can do.
Here's what we have to say, quick for dirt to the house. It's getting a little bit to upload that information into our system because I don't know if you know that they have some plants. Those items don't go online until you go into flight time. Probably all day if they have to be outloaded. And we can see what the damages are. We start comparing and we see that all the that we have planned to be able to work with that. I'll see that with you. Take our ID. This is more questions Okay. Okay. Value of our is absurdly low. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to be able to do that. Value of my home. You can talk to the local community about what they'll accept for additional information. Some of the guidance in our 758 that we talked about earlier is getting a private kind of appraisal to raise the value. Or you might ask the local community what other information they would get from us. But they, we asked them to use the number, and I've seen in the past in Florida that probably appraisal number being. Community has nothing to do with the 
So we're never going to take your flood insurance. Um, the impact to your flood insurance, uh, there is a new uh, part of your flood insurance. There's a claim history included in the cost of your flood insurance, which may impact you. But we are never going to drop from, from having flood Not a claim, yeah, a claim, yeah. So, so it's a program. We, we don't have, we're not like um, private insurance where we'll drop you because we didn't pay your bill. You know what I mean? Um, no, you don't pay your bill, and we will drop you, but you, you won't ever pay it. You'll never pay it. You can at least do that. But we need a bank to get the insurance if you have more specific information today. A full thing is an expert, not an expert. Okay, Deborah, you I might like put that. Okay. Um, this woman by the team. Yes. Yes. City of Treasure Island. Yes. City of Treasure Island. Yes. 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 What the community requires. I don't remember off the top of my head. So, black and copper. Are you obligated to keep this one of your serving part time? So, the question is if you keep flat FEMA money, are you required to have flood insurance for the life of that structure? If you are in a special flood hazard, you are all quiet to obtain a minor pain flood insurance in order to get new service to that But if you didn't want to be. If you still, if you did not carry flood insurance and you sell the house and they don't care, not the FEMA assistance, if that structure has received FEMA assistance before, I believe SBA, you also have flood insurance. No, 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 yeah. So I will I will talk to you the evacuation zoning, which is different than mm -hmm. the zoning. So I did see your zoning when I was watching the graduate. In fact, yeah, um, I think you're going to be able to get the zoning for the Okay, so I'm not. She was asking about rebuilding the house program. Also, this is not a program that is so Local community can't possibly pay for it and the only final decision on those applications. And there are a variety of kind of mitigation records and flood mitigation assistance programs through FEMA, and those are applied to the local communities. Right. Yeah. 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 They say the problem. They say okay. So seven in the shirts. It's not say the opposite. And two nights in other words, it makes sense that anybody if people don't spend it, anybody that happens to be damaged. It's considerable what a 
So the question is, she hasn't supported. Why will FDA give her the long enough? Oh, okay. So we have the rest. So are you a whore? Are you a whore? Yeah, uh, the limit uh, for whore of people that are uh, 500,000. Uh, yeah, it's only to the Nice job, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, the appeal to Congress is working on that to allocate more funds. So we all know that they are uh they are not in the deal right now when they return. Believe me, they are going to do that quickly um, um, fast. So, we always are encouraging the people to, to apply with us. The only issue is that it's going to take a little bit longer, but everything uh, stays the same. So, they are going to approve those funds for all those that, that, for all that people that uh, got approved. So, don't need to do that. So, we are just waiting for. The so, um, the question um, I'm going to be a cost of surplus. So, I will say, even if the local community is using a cost of surplus, it's estimated they have to really issue a permit based on. So, this is one thing you might think about. Estimate for substantial damage. There's getting a determination and then providing your cost to the air to be confirmed, which are not based, they're based on actual cost. Not that. Okay. Say that again about cost. Okay. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. This company is 
So, <laughs> so you receive funds and you're planning to sell your house? Oh, okay. All right. So, obviously, the funds are to repair the damage to the house. If you decide then to sell that house, all right. Is the plan to make the repairs before you sell the house? Okay, I'll, I'll take that one. Okay, all right. Well, this is not an easy question. We all start to start fun. Really That's not me. Hold on. Sometimes you need to be concentrated to figure out how to do it. No, so probably it's just you know, we can like look to see how they do it. It's not very clear. It's not like a different value for sort of like it. But to try to fit in the problems. That's awesome. That's like, honestly, because that, that, is, that is a whole profession. Yeah. Which is one of the multiple owners. Yes. So the way it's a few times, the question is behind the same time. I know that some of the things that are many owners and kind of the same things that are one. So that's what the location should be in the building. Concerned that the cost of repair is a whole building. So it's really a group effort. So the market value, the, the, the denominator, the calculation is the, 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 the property value of the entire property. It's just a part of the Oh, you're talking about um, assistance for condom. Oh, sorry. There's a question. Question? No. You're talking about the individual unit or the yeah. So if they have a wife with FEMA and we gave them funds, no funds here. Okay, but everybody gets a wife. Oh, no funds. For the individual, yes, no wife. Okay, I'll be with you too. All right, so uh, I'll answer your question individually. Okay, and um, so I I really want to get to everybody, but also I just want to make sure you guys know that there's a disaster recovery center that is close to here. It is actually in one two five two zero Old Merton Road, which is a uh, botanical. Okay, so there are they have much more personal policy that we can So if you have any questions that can be our if you need to upload any kind of document, they will be able to upload those documents for you. If you have a letter that you don't understand, we'll be able to that you know, 
trying to together to understand that way. Um, the end is in the botanical term. It opens from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day. But on November the 3rd, it's going to blow to go to another location that I'm going to be at. So that we can run from November the 3rd to go there from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day. It is 12520 over. So, we can we can we can answer new questions. Thank you.